Hey guys, Garrett here, and today I want to talk to you guys a little bit about evictions and what you may find once you go through an eviction. I'm going to give you an example of one that we just did. If you are a landlord long enough and you own enough properties, you're going to have more and more of a chance that you're going to have to have a tenant leave. Well, if they won't leave on their own, you're going to have to go through the legal process of eviction. And there are a number of reasons of why a person could be asked to leave the property, but the two biggest are they either stop paying, that's probably the biggest one, or their lease is up, you want to move on from that tenant, but they're unwilling to leave. Personally, I have been a tenant and I've been a landlord, so I've been on both sides of this. Now, I've never been evicted because I go into this knowing that this is a contract between the landlord and the leasee. If I break that contract, I understand, I don't get to stay in that property. That is not my property, I'm renting that property. I do not own that property, the landlord does. Therefore, my rights to that property are very, very limited. As long as that landlord has given me a nice, safe, clean property, I have no qualms with it. We have a contract, we're going to abide by that contract. I understand that if I stop paying, I can't be expected to stay in that property. I'm probably going to be evicted. And at the end of my lease term, when that's up, if the landlord doesn't want me to live there anymore, I have no right to be able to live there anymore. Well, not all tenants feel exactly that same way, or they get themselves in a bind and they're really just trying to buy time until they can move into the next place. The problem is it'll cost you as a landlord a bunch of time and money. You're not getting the rent. The property is still occupied. You still have to pay taxes and insurance and whatever else it is that you provide. So it can add up very, very quickly and it can sink landlords fast. And having income properties is a business and it needs to be treated like a business. So whenever we have a contract between us and the tenant, we very much lay it out right there at the very beginning. They understand what the process is going to be. It's all in that contract, but we verbalize everything. So they know what's going to happen. And they also know that if they don't pay, they don't stay, they will be evicted. And as a tenant gets behind on their rent, we give them late notices, let them know, hey, you are behind, you need to get caught up. If they don't, then we give them a three day notice to pay or quit. And if they don't do anything by that point, we turn it over to our attorney and they do all of the eviction process. We stay out of it at that point. This is a system that you as a business owner need to set up in the very beginning. You need to have your, your procedures in place. You need to have your team in place as well so that this can go legally, efficiently, and timely. Just recently, we did have a tenant that stopped paying. And so we gave them the late notices, the three-day notice. Then we sent it on to the attorney who got the eviction all the way through the steps. And it was easy to win because the tenant did not show up to court, so it was an automatic win for us. Then we had the process server come out, serve the writ, at which point the tenant was removed from that property. Unfortunately, uh, you know, most of the time we get there, we get to that point, and the tenant has already cleared out. But in this case, the tenant did not. They were actually in the property. Now, it was very peaceful. There was no words or anything like that. You know, you don't have to be mean when you're a landlord. You can be compassionate and understanding. But then again, if you do get a tenant that is combative, you keep yourself removed as much as possible and let the authorities take care of that. Since this tenant was kind and and wasn't combative in any way, we let her come back in the next day to take some of her stuff out because, uh, you know, realistically, we don't want the stuff. Uh, you know, this is a person's personal property. And the law says that we need to hold on to that stuff for 30 days, at which point then it would need to be auctioned off. But like I said, she's very kind, so we want to give her as much of her stuff as absolutely possible. But this is where it got kind of interesting because sometimes tenants, you know, they, they get a bunch of stuff, but they only really want to take just a little bit of it. And then once you start going through that property, you start to see the stuff and the bugs that are associated with that stuff and you're not really sure what to do at that point. And here is what we found at this property. As you first go into this house, you turn to the right, there's a bedroom. This was obviously a little girl's bedroom and there is just stuff and trash strewn everywhere. The carpet in there was brand new. This is a very nice place. We spent a bunch of money getting this place up and going. 
and it was very clean. Everything was painted, and now there's basically trash just strewn everywhere, clothes, wrappers. And then if you get close, you start to see what's crawling around, and that's a combination of ants and roaches. As we go back into the living room, again, there's just stuff everywhere. And when we served the writ, there were dogs in there as well, and they had cages. Well, if you look at the floor right here, you're going to notice that, you know, it was all brand spanking new. And now it's pretty much ruined. It was all laminate. That's where the dog cages were. And you want to be careful opening any boxes in here because they are filled with roaches. There are roaches everywhere. This is an absolute infestation in here, and I'm not sure how people live like this. But yeah, watch as I move this curtain. They just scatter. They're everywhere. And you know, these are just the ones that you can see. There are tons and tons that are hidden either in cabinets or behind cabinets or under them or in the appliances. They are everywhere. In this case, the walls are really dirty. There's just, like I said, stuff everywhere. You go into uh, the main bedroom where the gal slept, and I mean, it's just an absolute mess. I don't understand how people live like this and then live with the bugs to go along with it. Thankfully, the bathroom wasn't actually all that bad. But, Here's a corner of uh, one of the bedrooms, and again, the, the roaches are virtually raining down on you. And then you go to the bottom corner, and there was a lot of trash sitting right here. And roaches love this, but as you can see, they just scatter. There are hundreds of them right there. But the best thing to do is to bait it. I have a whole nother video on how to get rid of roaches. Make sure to check that one out, but the bait works great. You know, if you could look past all of the stuff, the house itself is actually not in that terribly bad shape. The problem is the stuff, and they don't want to take all the stuff with them. They want to leave it. They're picking through the things that they want and basically leaving everything else. And that begs the question, do I have to then hold on to it for that next 30 days? Well, that's kind of the problem. If I was to uh, put all of this stuff into a storage unit, I'm going to infest that storage unit with roaches. I'm sure as heck not going to take it to my own house or my own shop because I'm going to infest everything with roaches. Even if I leave it in the home and then auction it off at the end of this, nobody's going to want it. Why? Because it is infested with roaches. So literally none of this stuff, even if it looks pretty good, even the electronics like a DVD player or something like that, it's got those little vents on the bottom of it. They crawl up in there, lay their eggs, and then you've got more roaches. So you don't want to take that stuff home. Everything that is in that house that is a personal property item is trash. And legally we can get rid of anything that's going to harm that property or any of the properties surrounding it that we own. This is in a mobile home park and therefore we, you know, we own all the land. We uh, control a lot of the homes that are within it. This particular home we sold on contract, so we actually have a mortgage against the home, but we rent the lot to them. So that's how we were able to do all of the eviction. We were not required to provide any of the pest control related stuff, but as you can see, the way that they lived, it wouldn't have mattered. They would have had an infestation regardless because they're there is trash everywhere. You give roaches a food source that's just abundant, they are going to multiply like crazy. And that's exactly what you see here. We have to actually be careful of when we get rid of all of this trash and everything. And the reason is they're all full of roaches. We don't want to uh, spread them throughout the entire park. So what we've been doing basically is just putting things in trash bags, waiting for trash day, waiting until the truck is basically in our mobile home park. Quick, 
put it all into the trash cans and then let them take it so that the roaches don't have time to spread throughout the park. With that said, we're also treating it. And that starts with bait. We use Vendetta Plus. You can get a product called Vendetta, which is a great insecticide, but the Vendetta Plus is the way to go because it's insecticide plus it has an IGR, which is an insect growth regulator. It's basically birth control for roaches. And so we have to get this infestation under control, which means that we're not gonna be able to put a tenant back into that, uh, that unit for quite a while actually. It'll probably be at least a month, maybe two months before we can absolutely be sure that all of the roaches, the infestation, everything is gone. Plus, of course, we have to fix up the place. You know, there's flooring to do, there's painting to do. Thankfully, there's no holes. The windows are all good. So realistically, the place is in pretty good shape except for the infestation. And the infestation takes a while to get rid of which means we lose that revenue for a couple of months. If you have a roach infestation, make sure to watch my video on how to get rid of roaches. There's a link to that down in the description as well as a couple of links to the products that we use. We've had great luck with these products and they've proven that they can eradicate an infestation, which is so important to any landlord out there. Now you can definitely hire this out. You know, that's something you can do. And we've done a bunch of that. We've hired lots of pest control companies to do this and more of them have failed than have succeeded. But the ones that have succeeded, I watched them very closely to see how they did it. And it was not a hard thing to do. It's just a matter of finding the right products. Once you use the right products, you will get rid of them and you got to do it in the correct order again watch that video that i made like i said at the beginning of this if you are a landlord long enough you are going to have to deal with eviction and i really just wanted to show you what can come of it what you can be left with after uh, it can always be way worse they can just destroy everything and hopefully that doesn't happen to you if you are cordial about this uh, it's not going to happen. But if you are aggressive and mean about this, you can expect your property to be absolutely destroyed once you get it back. As a landlord, integrity is everything. Do what you say you are going to do. Put those systems in place that will take care of those things that can happen, whether that's a maintenance issue or a pest control issue or an eviction issue. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to hit that like button down below as well as subscribe. I'll see you next time.